I'm sure you're all happy about today's guest. It's great to have him here. Really had a massive output of music, um, really diverse sounds, worked with a lot of people. Um, I know you guys respect him a lot. Let's just have a little bim round of applause for Mark Lanigan. What was the first time, not the first record you remember hearing, but the first time you felt like you were part of a, a culture or a unit or some music spoke to you that, you know, was, a, was an alarm bell ringing? I mean, I started listening to the music that I still, you know, f uh, am inspired by today when I was like 13, 14 years old. And that was sort of the uh, original punk rock, um, you know, like The Damned, Ramones, uh, stuff before that, like New York Dolls, The Stooges, right. Velvet Underground, all that stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't until I was... 19 years old did I even meet anybody that was like-minded really. yeah that even knew what I was talking about if I mentioned any of those bands so I don't like today the, the internet is like pummeling you with information how did you how did you find out those records was it like an older brother or you know did you just hear something on the radio and buy a few magazines I, I collected comic books, and there was a comic book shop uh, in a town near my town, and uh, I was looking through a box of magazines that they had for free near the front door, and there was a copy of Cream magazine from the 70s, and uh, there was a picture of Iggy Pop in there, and I was like, uh, you know, what is this? And they also sold records there, and guy said oh this is uh you know do you want to hear this and put on uh, a single i can't remember which one it was but uh, i immediately like the next day brought in all my comic books and traded them trade for raw power and stuff like that yeah that's awesome man that's a good trade so when did you first start playing or singing or you know creating your own music i uh I had a job working for these people and their kids had a band and they rehearsed in the back room and I became friends with them and um, that's... Screaming trees, yeah. Yeah, guys that turned out to be the uh, only guys I had ever met that listened to the same kind of music as me and so I started playing with them. All your experiences of, of songwriting with so many different people you know, how you go about doing it. Uh, is it something that's always come naturally to you? Is it like a voice that you need to get out? Well, when I started, I there was really singing songs that were written by somebody else. A uh, guitar player in Screaming Trees wrote you know, all of our early songs. And so I was just really trying to, um, you know, sing these songs that were really, um, for, for starters, were out of my range. You know, he had oh. a much higher voice, and we had no idea how to, you know, change a key or do any of that stuff. So. So you just strained your voice. Basically, yeah. I've been made to do that. It's not nice. And um, it took a while before I started actually writing songs. Somebody offered me a, um, a chance to make a solo record, and. I didn't really uh, want to do it, but they offered me uh, enough money where I could quit my job at the time. Oh, really? That's so heck. I started, uh, I bought a guitar chord book and then acoustic guitar. And after work every day, I would sort of, you know, I would, I would actually come up with a vocal melody and then find the chords that went underneath it. Yeah. And that's how I wrote my first solo records, which is kind of backwards. Some of that we kind of talk to students about a little bit is, is ways they can get kind of the foot in the door of the industry or, uh, and, you know, you've got a great amount of experience. Is, is there any advice you can kind of give them for longevity in the industry? Because, you know, it's really rare these days to kind of be in the industry for more than a couple of years. I've just always tried to make the music be its own reward and um, by that I mean uh, I guess I would I love music and I've learned to love making music um, and I would continue to do it whether somebody else was hearing it or not just purely making music for love and not the money that's yeah 
really the only advice I could give. Um, I think the main thing I've got from it is probably to like be a lot more diverse with what I'm listen listening to and like just try create my own kind of sound I guess and be a bit more sonically aware from stuff like that. I've took two master classes are probably one of the best things about them because it's genuine advice and obviously the people that come in are experts and they've actually experienced the things that you want to do.